Are you interested in the immediate position of the S&P and how it relates to the election cycle? This year is a pre-election year, and it has a really strong average trend I want to talk about as well. So this is Robert Miner with Dynamic Traders Group. Let's take a close look at the immediate position of the S&P and the probable trend until the end of the year. Of course, if you like this video, what you learn, you can apply to any market in any time frame. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, let your friends know about it. Okay, let's take a look at the S&P. Here we go. Well, this is SPX weekly data. So there's just a couple key pieces of information for you here that's relevant over the next week or so. And we'll start at the bottom of the chart. Number one is that our weekly momentum cycle has reached dual look back overbought. That means we want to be aware that we're pretty close to completing what we call a weekly high. A weekly high is a high that lasts for at least two to three weeks uh, and is followed by the market is probably sideways to down for two or three weeks. Um, in the case of the SPX, if a weekly high is complete next week as anticipated, any decline should be a correction. The SPX probably has several more weeks, if not a month or two, net bull trend before the advance from the October low is over. So again, weekly momentums are due a look back over, bought a weekly high is near. Next week is uh, the probable maximum time to complete that weekly high, as I've been telling subscribers for the last couple of weeks. Why is that? Well, since the October low, every five to seven weeks, the SPX has made a reversal. We call that a reversal cycle, not necessarily a high or a low, but every five to seven weeks, a reversal that lasts at least two or three weeks, if not more. So this past week was week number six. Next week is week number seven. So we're at the maximum time from when a weekly high is probable, and that would be next week, the seventh week, uh, from our last high in October. And you can just see, I've marked a lot of these off, uh, seven weeks, six weeks, six weeks, five weeks, seven weeks. Last week was week six. Next week, the week ending December 8th is week seven. So again, should be a temporary high, just followed by two or three weeks of correction. At least that's the probable position. Here we are with the daily data and coming off of this October low, I, I have to tell you that it uh, the SPX has continued further and longer than anticipated before this weekly high was made. Now we're at the extreme, so we have a really high probability. And here's the, the pattern position has come into focus and clarified itself just in the last week. So coming off of the October low, uh, probable one, and then sideways, the obvious correction to this initial impulsive advance. Another impulsive advance up to a uh, day or two before Thanksgiving last week, or two weeks ago, actually. Another impulsive advance, and then another four to five days sideways. And here, this is Friday, popped to a new high. What we want to be prepared for is in the next few days to complete this initial impulsive advance off the October low. The ideal date to complete that would be Wednesday the 6th. So our uh, daily momentum made a bull reversal on Friday indicates another two to three days sideways to up. And that takes us right into the 6th. That's really a key time factor to complete uh, the wave five. And we know that there's also a weekly time factor next week. So it seems to all be coming together. Just keep in mind that any decline will be a correction. Now, I want to show you something uh, very interesting. It's about the election cycle. So this is a chart of the pre-election year averages since 1949. And uh, on average, the month of December from kind of late November into the year end is, has been positive, very positive. A couple of these lines are, uh, these are first term. The green line is a first term pre-election year. And of course, this year in the United States is a pre-election year. Next year is a presidential election. And this blue line is all pre-election years since 1949. Actually, the first pre-election year since that date, I think it was 1951. But you can see that they're both 
uh, strongly positive for that period of the year. That's what the uh, S&P has been. The red line is 2023, right up through the prior week. So if we were to make a decision based on averages, we would say um, more than likely, is we wanna be very bullish into the end of this year. Keep in mind that no one, and I'm gonna repeat, no one in their right mind makes a trading decision where their money is at risk based on averages. Averages are a starting point of where to further uh, take a look, take a deep, deeper dive into a trend and possibilities because an average can be made up of positive and negative numbers. So an average uh, nece isn't necessarily typical of what the next data point is gonna do. So pre-election year average trend has been overwhelmingly positive from late, late November to the end of the year. You've probably seen some articles and charts uh, about how this is the season to be positive. Okay, let's take a look at the underlying data. This is the pre-election year Santa Claus rally. Now, my version of the Santa Claus rally is from the day, trading day before Thanksgiving to the trading day before Christmas. Uh, other people have different uh, time period for a Santa Claus rally, but that's the one that makes sense to me. It's basically the month of December, for most of December. And this is every, uh, every year since 1951. This is Thanksgiving to Christmas. And we can see out of 18 years, these are just pre-election years, 15 of those have been positive. There's only three negative. But does that mean the next one has to be positive? When we look at statistics like that, there, it does not determine or give, give you any probability whatsoever of what the next data point is going to be. Sure, the bias has been overwhelming positive for the month of December, but there's been three negative months. We might want to took, take a look, or excuse me, three negative years during uh, December we might want to be aware of because next year could be one of those negative years. And remember, we just looked at the position of the S&P and we're anticipating a good possibility that next week, that's the week ending December 8th, is going to be a high lasting two or three weeks. That would mean a high into the end of the year. So we're going to take a close look at 2015. It was one of the three negative years uh, in the, since 1951. So let me go forward here. Here's a chart of 2015. This is the weekly data since 2015. This is a chart of 2023. Again, weekly data up through the week ending December 1st when I'm recording this. Let's just take a look at the, at, uh, the compare these two charts. In 2014, there was a December low and advance a correction into a March low. It was a 12-week low to low. 2023. In December of 2022, a low and advance a correction into mid-March, 12 weeks from the December low. Oh, my gracious. Looks familiar, doesn't it? How about after the March low? I, th I think I said December. I meant March low. 19-week um, net advance into the latter part of July. How about 2015 from the March low into the latter part of July? 19 weeks, that's the exact week of the recent high, weekly high, followed by a 13-week decline into October. So if we look at uh, early October in 2015, there was a low and then a net advance for 19 weeks into the early December high. So it's not a com uh, an exact comparison, but July high, October low, July high, October low, and advance into the first week in December, advance so far into, well, December 1st, next week is really the first week in December. So if this parallel continues, and it's not a forecast that it's going to continue by any means, what this does is tell us, Here's a possibility, and it's a, a closer comparison by, by far than relying on an average trend of year, some years that were positive, some that were negative. So we have our technical analysis 
uh, including Elliott Wave, Time and Price, et cetera, that is indicating that next week would be a weekly high. Boy, that'd be the exact time, 19 weeks from the July 2015 high, where it made it high in early December, then it was sideways to down into the end of the year, pretty sharp decline for a couple of weeks. And 19 weeks from the July 2023 high is, where is that? Ah, it's next week. So we might want to uh, not rely on an average bullish trend for the next several weeks. We have our technical analysis says that more than likely a weekly high next week, and we have a really close comparison with 2015, where the weekly high was made in December, then sideways to down into the end of the year, contrary to the average pre-election year for December. So it's just something to keep in mind. So a quick reminder, if you're really interested to learn to trade, uh, is check out our Dynamic Trading Master Course. It's 50% off only through Sunday, December 3rd. It's our last student intake for this year. So it's a fantastic course, almost 30 hours. It'll take you some time to get through it. But boy, you will understand trading strategies after you take this course any marketing time frame. That's it for today. It's Robert Miner over and out for now.